<laughs> Woo! Four out of five! There's several types of reactions that create a lot of gas when they mix together. We've played with several of those in the past, and today we're going to be doing so again in a new fun way. To first look at what I'm talking about, let's go back to a pretty old and standard chemical reaction to see what happens when you combine baking soda with vinegar. I'm not going to be doing baking soda powder on its own, I'm going to be doing baking soda mixed into water. Let's just get that nice and saturated. And here I've got some vinegar. Now this is cleaning vinegar. This does work with the cooking vinegar as well. You don't have to use the 6%, but I've got it. So with baking soda and vinegar, we get a pretty fun reaction. It bubbles up, it creates that air. And there's a couple things we can do to make it just a little more visually appealing. The reaction is the same, but instead of all of the created air escaping, it stays nicely in place. A little bit of food coloring adds some color to it. And if we add some dish soap, which bubbles up quite well, at least we can keep some of the air contained in bubbles, we'll see if it stays in the bottle. Let's see what kind of reaction we get this time with the same re chemical reaction going on, but this time we've added food coloring and soap to try and capture it a little better. Ta-da! It escapes the bottle, it creates a foam that lingers for a little bit longer, and that's what we're going for. Now, if you are trying to make a science fair volcano, this is a great way to do it. You use a uh, red and orange food coloring instead of blue, and it looks kind of like lava erupting out. It's fun, but we're not trying to make a science fair volcano today. We're trying to make something a little more exciting. If you've been on YouTube for really any amount of time, you've almost certainly heard of something called elephant toothpaste. And the version of that that we're using is potassium iodide reacting with hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to put that in our water. You can optimize the reaction and get the best volume out of your experiment. I'll add my food coloring and the soap, and then we're going to add our hydrogen peroxide to it and see what that does compared to the vinegar and baking soda reaction. Wait for it. And that's the exciting part about an elephant toothpaste reaction. In addition to creating a lot of air, it also puts off a decent amount of heat. So my hands are cold out here today. You might be able to see some ice and snow on the ground. The foam warms them up nicely. So if we're not trying to make all of these reactions foam out of a Gatorade bottle, what is our goal? Well, today we are making rockets powered by elephant toothpaste. Soda bottles are built to hold a little bit of pressure in them. The carbonation that's usually there in soda is being held in place and you know they really don't seem to bulge or stretch or break very often but we might be going for a little bit higher pressure. Some of you may have seen a video we did before where we put elephant toothpaste into some PVC thinking maybe we could use it as a sort of compressed air cannon and it exploded on us. It tore the PVC open quite powerfully so we think that might happen if we sealed it in one of these but again we're not trying to make something explode we're trying to make something launch. So we've got the screw sticking up in there but it's not necessarily long enough or pointy enough because we're going to have one of our chemicals inside a water balloon in the bottle. So to make sure that this screw point is going to be impressive enough, we're going to add a razor blade onto the top of it. Look at that, just a nice little balloon popper sticking up into our rocket. Since we started with the baking soda and vinegar reaction, I want to try that again. I want to see if we can get our rocket to launch using that. Now we're gonna take a balloon down into our bottle and then we're going to squeeze all that solution down in there. Just gonna shake this a little and see if I can let out a little bit of extra gas and foam because I want this balloon to come as close to sinking in the solution as possible. It has to get down to that razor blade. And if we have a lot of the liquid and this is too full of air, then it won't fall far enough down into the bottle. I'm also not planning to add all that much vinegar, so it probably wouldn't be a problem anyway, but better safe than sorry. And we're adding our 6% vinegar solution here. Right, we've got our stopper. Throw that on uh, a little bit tight, but not I'm not pushing down on it as hard as I can. Hopefully that will fire if we turn it upside down. Baking soda and vinegar, let's see if this works out. Oh, turned blue, that means it opened. How long will it take to build up enough pressure? Oh, that's how long. <laughs> All right, that launched, went probably 40 feet in the air. We got a rocket. It left a nice trail of blue foam behind it. What a treat. Okay, we're ready for our first 
elephant toothpaste test. Yes. It's going. Woo! Coming down, coming down. <laughs> the baking soda vinegar went maybe 40 feet high. That went probably 200. That was incredible. Oh, that was great. I'm very happy with how this worked and we've got more things to try with it. But first, I wanna talk about this. I am not the first person to think of this. Although I didn't find anyone else who was actually making elephant toothpaste rockets. That dates back to World War II when I believe a Nazi scientist proposed doing that. Guys, everyone say hello to Integza. Integza, how you doing? Uh, pretty well. Uh, still pretty into rocketry at the moment. Exactly. Perfect. So you have been working on some version of a rocket powered by this reaction for longer than I have. In fact, I learned about you because our friend Lewis Wise was at the studio. We told him about this idea to make elephant toothpaste powered rockets. And I think like one day later, he sent me a link to your video where you, I think, introduced this idea. You talked about how it had been done in the past and you wanted to do stuff with it. Yeah, it kind of, it was uh, like I uh, stumbled upon the reaction. Then I learned that the German tried to use this in the Second World War. And then I found out the Mark Rober video in which he does the devil toothpaste experiment. Then I found out that for the experiment to be actually used in a rocket, it needs to be very highly concentrated hydrogen peroxide, not the one you buy at the pharmacy is like 3%. For rocketry, we're talking about like 50% and higher. And it would be wonderful because it doesn't have combustion. And that complicates stuff a little bit because if you want to use combustion for a rocket, you need metal parts. On my first version, I basically injected the, the potassium permanganate uh, into a chamber with uh, also the hydrogen peroxide and it worked pretty well. So on a second stage, I actually built a rocket that I put on a skateboard to make sure that it would move. It would generate thrust enough to move the skateboard. And it did pretty well, yeah. I've seen some of your videos and I see behind you what looks like five different 3D printers. And I, I can't help but wonder if a little bit of 3D printing could make a soda bottle rocket turn into like a soda bottle rocket that works way better. Oh yeah, oh that's pretty cool. Um, but I, I noticed that you're like, just using a hole for the nozzle, you're not really using an actual nozzle for the bottle, are you? That's right. That would be a great idea to use a nozzle on that. You would get much higher. Well, that sounds like something that uh, I think we might need to team up on, because I don't know how to make a rocket nozzle, but I think you do. Well, you came to the right place, man. <laughs> Fantastic. Guys, if you haven't yet, go check out Integza's channel. He's got a lot of great stuff, and in just a couple days, he's going to have a video dropping showing the design process of a rocket nozzle. That should be awesome. All right, I've got three rockets ready to go. We're gonna have fun with these. And then we've got one more idea of how to scale it up even more. Going. Oh, I'm in a danger zone. Oh, I'm gonna have to find that. <laughs> Woo! The foam I can see like building up in the bottle in very slow motion. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Like a rocket. Oh, that is great. That's fantastic. I'm trying to make it shoot off at more of an angle. Ah! <laughs> I don't think I had the stopper on that one as hard. It launched, but it didn't launch as far. And I believe that the stopper is really what defines like how much launch it gets. Like, was there a lot of pressure before it launched or just like, eh, a little. All right, here goes. Wow. That really goes. Find our rockets. There's a trail. Following the trail. Where'd they go? Ah, stuck in the brush. Ah, ah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh no, I think they're over the fence. There's one. I see it. Da -da -da -da. All right, and this is a rocket launcher. No, not the weapon kind. This is a tool designed to launch several rockets at once. That's the goal here. So let me show you how it works. There's a couple pieces on hinges. This whole piece 
hinges right there. And then this right here is on straps that act as a hinge. The idea is that you take one of these rockets, place it down here, right like that on the wood. And then this is specially cut and measured to hold everything in place. The fin is being sort of imprisoned by this piece of wood right here. So I should be able to take the whole thing and tip it, dropping this off. And that should put everything standing up nicely with nothing impeding it. So it can just shoot off into the sky. Moment of truth. Let's hope this works. All right, here goes. Four out of five ain't bad. Woo, four out of five. Kind of saw that coming. I think I said, what if I did that at some point? Like, I wonder if I added water instead of hydrogen peroxide or if I didn't add the crystals to one of them. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Just the droppings on the ground everywhere. Oh, now I gotta try and find them all. Well, follow the trails. Given how well the four that went did go, I'm sure if I'd remembered all of the chemicals, we would have had five and very close succession. Like they almost went off at the same time. Super cool to see. We would love to revisit this. If you have any ideas of things you'd like to see us change up about this, let us know. And because we've been talking to Integza, I'm hoping that maybe we can figure out some sort of 3D printed rocket nozzle that fits on a soda bottle to give it a lot more concentrated thrust. I think that this same project could get even, like we're shooting probably 200 feet up in the air. I bet we could get like double that if we didn't just have an open hole as a nozzle. Uh, I'm not a rocket scientist, but that's just my gut feeling. Anything else you'd like to see us try with this, please let us know. Maybe we'll give it a shot.